Today, it's time to review the layers of the ocean for fourth grade science. We're gonna start by reviewing the layers, then we'll go over the sunlight zone, the twilight zone, the midnight zone, the abyss, and then finally the hadal zone. And then we'll talk about animals in each zone and finally studying the hadal zone, which is the deepest zone and how scientists are able to do that. And then we'll review and finish with a summary. <laughs> All right, so an overview of the layers of the ocean. There are five layers. There's the sunlight zone, twilight zone, midnight zone, the abyss, and then finally the hadal zone. The ocean is divided into different layers, just like a cake has different layers. Let's start with the first layer called the sunlight zone, where there's a lot of light from the sun. This is the top layer of the ocean. Next, we have the twilight zone. It's a bit darker here because less sunlight reaches this layer. Some cool and strange animals live in the zone, such as anglerfish with their glowing lures. Then there's the midnight zone. It's really dark down there because hardly any sunlight can reach this layer, but there are some amazing creatures like giant squids who live in this deep, dark part of the ocean. Next, we have the abyss, which is the deepest part of the ocean. It's like the bottom layer of our ocean cake. The pressure is super high and it's extremely cold there. Only a few very special animals can survive in this extreme environment. There's one more layer I haven't mentioned yet. It's called the Hadal Zone, named after the Greek god of the underworld, Hades. This layer is found in the deepest trenches of the ocean floor, like the Mariana Trench. It's an incredibly dark and extreme environment with immense pressure and very low temperatures. In the Hadal Zone, you can find some extraordinary creatures like the deep sea amphipod, a small shrimp-like animal that can withstand the extreme conditions. Scientists are still discovering new species in this mysterious part of the ocean. So the ocean is divided into these layers based on how deep and dark it gets. Each layer has its own unique plants and animals. Isn't that fascinating? So to recap, we have the sunlight zone, twilight zone, midnight zone, abyss, and the hadal zone, which represent the different layers of the ocean. Each layer has its own unique characteristics and inhabitants. Exploring these layers helps us understand and appreciate the incredible diversity of life in our oceans. Now it's time to overview the animals that live in each zone. First, we'll do the sunlight zone. This is the top layer of the ocean where sunlight reaches. Animals here have to adapt to bright light and warm temperatures. Some examples are dolphins. They have streamlined bodies that help them swim fast and leap above the water. Clownfish, they live among sea anemones and have a slimy mucus coat that protects them from stinging tentacles. And sea turtles, they have flippers to help them swim and shells to protect themselves. Next is the twilight zone. This layer gets less sunlight, so animals here have to adapt to dim light and cooler temperatures. Here are a few examples. Lanternfish, they have a special light producing organs called photophores that help them camouflage or attract mates. Vampire squid, they can turn their bodies inside out, making them look bigger and scarier to scare away predators. And hatchet fish, they have flat bodies and big eyes that help them see in the dim light. The midnight zone, in this layer, it's very dark. It's like nighttime all the time. Animals here have to adapt to extreme pressure and frigid temperatures. Some examples include the gulper eel. They have big mouths that can open wide to swallow prey larger than themselves. The anglerfish. This female has a glowing lure on her head that attracts prey in the dark. And the fangtooth fish. They have long teeth that help them catch and eat other fish. Next, we have the abyss zone. This layer is even deeper where there's no light at all. Animals here have to adapt to survive in the pitch black darkness. Here are a few examples. The deep sea hatchet fish. They have a bioluminescent spot on their bellies to hide their silhouette from predators below. The tripod fish. They have long thin fins that help them stand still on the seafloor and wait for food to come to them. And the vampire squid. They have sticky tentacles and can turn themselves into a ball shape to protect themselves. Animals in the abyss layer of the ocean have evolved various adaptations to survive in the absence of light. One adaptation is bioluminescence, where organisms can produce their own light using special cells. This allows them to produce their own light and navigate in the darkness, attract prey, and even communicate with others of their species. Other animals have developed large eyes with incredible sensitory, uh, sensitivity to low levels of light, allowing them to capture any minimal available light. Some species have even developed specialized organs that can produce their own light, which they use to attract prey or confuse predators. Additionally, many abyssal organisms have a slower metabolism compared to their shallow watered counterparts. This allows them to conserve energy in the low food environments of the abyss. They may ha also have elongated bodies or appendages to maximize their surface area for absorbing any available nutrients. 
Overall, these adaptations help abyssal animals survive and thrive in the pitch black darkness of the abyssal layer of the ocean. In the Hadal zone, this is the deepest layer found in the trenches. Animals here have to adapt to extreme pressure and very low temperatures. One example is the deep sea amphipod. They have a hard exoskeleton and special proteins in their bodies to withstand the pressure and cold temperatures. That is just one example and there are many more fascinating creatures in each layer of the ocean. Exploring these different layers helps us learn about the incredible adaptations that allow them to survive in their own unique habitats. How do scientists study the Hadal Zone? Well, scientists study the Hadal Zone, which is the deepest part of the ocean, using various research methods and technologies. One common method is the use of remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, and autonomous underwater vehicles, AUVs, equipped with cameras and sensors. These vehicles are controlled from the surface and can withstand the extreme pressures of the deep sea. Scientists also deploy deep sea submersibles, such as the famous Alvin Submersible, which can carry human researchers to great depths. These submersibles allow scientists to directly observe and collect samples from the Hadal Zone. To collect samples, scientists use specialized equipment like sediment cores, trawls, and grab samplers. They can study the geological features, collect water samples, and capture organisms from the Hadal Zone for further analysis. In addition to these physical methods, scientists also gather data from acoustic and satellite technologies. They use sonar systems to map the seafloor and study the topography of the Hadal Zone. Satellites can also provide valuable information about the physical properties of the ocean, such as temperature and salinity. Overall, studying the Hadal Zone requires a combination of advanced technology, specialized equipment, and exploration techniques to understand the unique ecosystems and geological features of this extreme environment. So to summarize, the ocean is made up of different layers, just like a sandwich has different layers. The first layer is called the sunlight zone, where the sun's light reaches and where many plants and animals live. The next layer is called the twilight zone, where it starts to get darker and cooler, and some special animals have adapted to survive. The third layer is called the midnight zone, where it's really dark and very cold, and animals here have to find ways to deal with the extreme conditions. Finally, we have the Hadal Zone, which is the deepest part of the ocean. It's like going to the bottom of a pool, but much, much deeper. It's very dark, and the pressure is so strong that it would crush a human if they went down there. But there are some amazing creatures that can survive in this extreme environment, like deep-sea jellyfish and weird-looking fish. Scientists use special equipment and technology to study and explore this mysterious zone.